I think she's staying with us now. The co-founder of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates, has reiterated the need for Nigeria to patronize the development of its healthcare sector rather than focusing on the COVID-19 vaccine. Speaking during an interview session with journalists, Mr. Gates said the country should divert resources budgeted for approved COVID-19 vaccines into the development of the country's weak healthcare system. There's no doubt that the impact of putting money into the health system, particularly the primary healthcare system, will be very high in terms of saving children's life. Nigeria should not divert the very limited money that it has for health into trying to pay a high price for COVID-19 vaccine, Mr. Gates said, said. Now, his statement was a response to a question on Nigeria's plan to invest about 400 billion naira to vaccinate 70% of Nigeria's population at $8 per vaccine. Nigeria's health minister, Osage Ehanire, in December 2020, told the Senate that $156 billion will be needed in 2021, while $200 billion will be used for vaccination in 2022, according to a report by the cable. Now, the question is, do we really need to invest in vaccine? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. So I'm going to bring in our guest in like a minute, right? Do you agree with um, Bill Gates' summation on the health structure in Nigeria? Let me come to EC, then I'll come to Jennifer. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> How about you, Jennifer? <laughs> I agree with him. We really need to improve our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And he's not the first person who has actually come for us for this particular issue. So I'm actually happy that we're talking about it right now. And a lot of Nigerians need to actually start talking about it. We are all aware that the healthcare system is not that great. So I think we all need to come together to start pushing the government to do something about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I also agree with him. The truth is, um, the expectations for COVID, I mean, we didn't meet their expectations, what, the, what, um, COVID, what the, the estimations that they made about COVID, how Africans were dropping like flies, we didn't do that. So we, our, our immune system is quite strong, so I would rather you invest in our healthcare structure. But let me bring in Dr. Kemi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring in Dr. Kemi. Dr. Kemi Odukoya is an associate professor at the Epidemiology and Biostatistics Unit of Department of Community Health and Primary Care, College of Medicine, University of Lagos, and Honorary Consultant, Public Health Physician at Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, a fellow at the National Postgraduate Medical College with over 20 years of experience and currently serves on several COVID-19 think tank and research group. She is a team lead for the Unilag COVID-19 data monitoring team and provides COVID-19 advisory services to private organizations and multilateral donors on request. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Kemi. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Such an honor to have you. Thank you so much. So you, you heard our little banter on the conversation. Um, you are the, a frontline worker, like you are at the forefront of this COVID-19 fight. Um, maybe, first of all, let us share your experience with you. Um, let's share, let's hear what your experience has been like. How has it been, you know, dealing with COVID-19 in Nigeria, in the reality of the sense of it? Uh, thank you very much, lady. It's nice uh, being here and it's nice listening to you and having this conversation. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's the thing. You know, COVID has been with us now. It's almost a year. Uh, things are definitely different. I'm not sure there's any healthcare worker in Nigeria that wouldn't say that things are different. And we see the differences. We see people getting sick. We see people dying. We see people getting sick and dying in their prime. Um, so COVID is not child's play. It's, it's, it's a terrible disease. While a significant number of people might be mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic, we still have a lot of people who have moderate illness, severe that progresses to severe illness and also progresses to death. So COVID is here with us. Um, however, comparatively, and when I say comparatively, when we compare how COVID is affecting uh, primarily more developed countries, and I think I'd use the United States as a good example, we see that the scale and the magnitude of disease and death that we see here in Nigeria is 
by no means as much as what uh, is going on in more developed, at least in some more developed clients. And that's probably the reason why uh, Mr. Bill Gates has said what he has said. And the best way I can use to explain this analogy is, you know, you, you have two children. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, um, you know, I mean, children are not the same. So one of them might have needs in one area and the other one might have needs in another area. So, of course, you might not necessarily give them the exact same, uh, um, you know, investments because when you give one something, if, it that, if that's not that one's primary need, then, you know, you may have a problem. So I think what he's trying to say is that our primary need, our primary concern is still the fact that we have a weak healthcare system. COVID has only made that worse. And there are still a lot of people dying from preventable illnesses. Lots of people are dying from malaria, tuberculosis, HIV. Women are dying in pregnancy when they're not supposed to be as expected. Um, children are dying from preventable dis diseases like diarrhea. Yeah. So we have these problems. Some people are dying simply because they can't afford basic essential drugs that sometimes cost less than a thousand naira. So I think his point is against the backdrop of all of that in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How do you justify spending a whole lot of money yeah. on COVID vaccines when you have a whole lot of other very important, urgent, pressing issues. But these issues are not crying and shouting. COVID is, you know, COVID is a loud disease. Yeah. COVID makes a lot of noise. COVID attracts a lot of attention. Okay. Every, almost every day, a woman in Nigeria will die simply because she's trying to bring life into this world. Hmm. That's not noisy. Nobody gets to hear about it. It doesn't make headlines. The same way in many of our teaching hospitals, I'm sure a lot of our doctors and nurses will agree that we see countless numbers of needless deaths. Hmm. I have watched people die simply because we couldn't get blood to them on time. No other reason for death, but because blood didn't get there on time. Hmm. So you have a whole lot of those kinds of things going on in this country they don't shout they don't make an announcement but of course the families of the people that are affected they know these things they feel these things and we are not addressing these things as much so i think mr bill gates point is comparatively so you have a child who is malnourished, he hasn't eaten, and then we are saying, hey, everybody wants pizza. And we're like, well, you know, pizza might taste nice, but this child needs regular food first. Mm. And while you it may be great to have all those things, you need to address the fundamentals. Absolutely. And then the thing is, we get a lot of value when we address the fundamentals. Mm. So if we invest in primary health care, if we invest in uh, health education for common uh, treat, uh, common illnesses, if we invest in making sure Nigerians have essential drugs. Now, what do we mean by essential drugs? There are some basic drugs. There are not many. We don't need a million and one drugs. We just need access to affordable drugs that 80% of Nigerians need for 80% for of conditions. Mm. So you could have maybe a drug like uh, paracetamol. An unbranded version of paracetamol could cost you as low as one naira. Then you could have maybe a very expensive, um, maybe cancer-curing drug that can that one dose can cost two million naira. Mm. Now it doesn't mean that we don't want to treat cancer, but it just means that comparatively, where should we put our money in? If we put that money in uh, a paracetamol or an anti-malaria aerial or uh, I guess paracetamol isn't a good example, an anti-malarial or money for treatment of tuberculosis or, um, or, or simple antibiotics that can save a child from dying or in oral rehydration solution. Mm. There are some children that die 
simply the because there's no oral rehydration wow. solution. So you have those kinds of things. Uh, and I guess Mr. Mr. Gates, because uh, he's, he spent a lot of time uh, looking at money, investing in Africa's healthcare system. I think that he's probably see, he has some insights and understands the way the system is and uh, and hence his advice. So I, I guess I, I, I feel him, I know where he's coming from, and I do agree that we need to invest in primary health care in our country, Nigeria, if we want to reduce mass and mortality rate, if we want to reduce, uh, those rates are too high. Mm. The number of children under five that are dying in Nigeria, are too, there are some children that are going to die before five simply because they were born in this country. Mm. No other reason. Okay, okay doctor. So those are the those are the issues. Yeah. Right. Okay, doctor. Um, if I may step in, please. Um, you talked about primary health care in Nigeria. Does primary health care um, affect? Um, how do I phrase this? Does primary health care affect the medical personnel? Do you think that? the um, in investing in pers medical personnel is a paramount issue in Nigeria currently. Will that aid the healthcare okay. sector? Okay, thanks. Let me quickly say this. There are three levels of care. So we have primary health care. We have, well, we have primary care. Let me put it away, not primary health care. We have secondary care and we have tertiary care. Now, the idea is this, um, most people, and most illnesses can be addressed at, at the, the primary, primary level. care level. Mm -hmm. So the assumption is if you, in, if you invest in making sure that people are well taken care of at that primary level, fewer people would need secondary care and fewer people would need tertiary care. And then when you look at cost, the cost of primary care is cheaper Super. than secondary care mm -hmm. and tertiary care. Mm -hmm. So having said that, and going into the issue of healthcare workers. Healthcare workers are needed at every level of care. We have healthcare workers in primary care, healthcare workers in secondary care, healthcare workers in tertiary care. So I'm not sure it's like one thing or the other. Um, doctors, are, I have, I have uh, been, in, I mean, when I was much younger, I did a whole lot of primary care and I loved it. It was great, I mean, at that time and why it lasted. And I'm sure a lot of uh, doctors would also love that too. So I'm not sure we need to say that, I mean, I'm not sure we're choosing, but I also want to reiterate that there is a difference between primary care and primary health care. What Bill Gates says is that he wants us to invest in primary health care. Mm -hmm. Primary health care is a package of about eight elements. Um, making sure that people are, people are aware about common illnesses, mm -hmm. making sure that people, for instance, people need to know that hypertension kills and at a certain age you need to check your blood pressure and if everybody knows that we would have a reduction in stroke a reduction in heart in uh, in, in heart attacks mm. if we have a reduction in stroke and heart attacks now there will be fewer people who need uh i mean if you know anybody that had a stroke it costs a whole lot of money Absolutely. to treat a stroke compared to the amount of money it would cost to buy a simple uh, antihypertensive medication. Yes. You know, so that's one example. Um, like I said, there are several elements. I gave an example of essential drugs. That's another element of primary health care. And that's making sure that we don't need all the drugs in the world. We don't need to have all the drugs in the world in Nigeria, but we need to have drugs that affect at least 80 percent of most of the common illnesses that okay. most nigerians have Doc, so yeah. let me cut you short quickly um i'll come to you jennifer but we need to take a break but i wanted yeah. to quickly say that if i try to understand ec there's a part i think i need you to help me clarify so are we lacking primary health care workers like do we lack the personnel themselves the expertise at that primary level because that's why a lot of people would rather go to um, so, for instance, I have a headache. I'll go to Luth instead of going to my primary um, health care center. center that is closest to me. Do you get my point? So, are we in lack of the right personnel at that primary level? Let me just quickly clarify that because I'm having that question ringing in my head. Okay. All right. It's beyond the personnel. And I would ask you, I'd ask the members of the audience, how many people in the last year 
have visited a primary health care center in this country. I've never visited Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> and there's a reason why. Because there's a perception mm -hmm. that the kind of care that you would get at that level isn't high quality care. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to do is we need to fix that. We need to make sure that people can get high quality care in a primary health care. Because the idea behind primary health care is that it's supposed to be health care near your house. Mm. True. I mean, Lagos alone has more than 300 primary health care centers. And I'm sure for all of us, if you just look around your house, there's one around there somewhere. I don't you even probably know where it is. I never noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there somewhere. Yeah. And you probably don't go there because I'm because either you you don't think you might get your care or you might have been there once and maybe for some reason you're not very happy with the care that you received yeah so if we can fix that if we can make sure and then there's a whole lot that makes a healthcare system work mm. healthcare workers are just one aspect mm. uh even if you have a doctor a great wonderful experienced doctor and a fantastic nurse uh, and a lovely lab scientist there uh, if they don't have the tools to work, to work with, with, you're not going to ah. go there again. Doctor, you know what? Let's just let's <laughs> let's stay on that. When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right uh, back. All right.